in today's show, I come up with a viable solution for what to do about events and how to make them more accessible to everyone. And then we take out one of my favorite ships and what I'm calling the bell of the ball. Welcome to day five or six of Invictus, and this is one of my most exciting days for Invictus this year, and it is the release of what I will call the newest ships in the game. And these ships, of course, are going to come from Crusader Industries. Now, Crusader brings us the venerable Mercury Star Runner, and that's been in the game for a while, but quite a number of you have just not had the opportunity to take it out, try it, and fly it yet. And of course, the brand new Starlifter. Now, I hate the fact that they use two names from the past ships or past aircraft from the United States Air Force. They could have used the Hercules and the Starlifter separately, but they kind of combined them. But nonetheless, these are great ships, wonderful, awesome, and you'll be able to rent them. Now, I did think a little bit about some of my comments from yesterday, and it's come to my attention that many of you have pointed out that the new people might find these events quite attractive. I don't think that that is out of the norm. I think that might be absolutely something that we need to take record of, that we have to take notice of, that new people can really find a lot out about the game by coming to these events but still there's many people that cannot play every day or even every other day throughout the course of one week and that really does limit what they can see here at the venue on New Babbage or at New Babbage on Microtech. So I've been thinking about this and really trying to come up with a solution and for the time being Invictus Week and the Great Starship, whatever you want to call it, the Aerospace Convention are all held here in Stanton. In the future, you're probably going to be having them held in different places each year. But for the time being, we're here. And we're about ready to have four planets, being R-Corp, Hurston, Crusader, and Microtech. Two of them, R-Corp and Microtech, already have venues. Maybe on the third one that's going to be out soon, Crusader, build a huge venue also. I think those three places are nice enough to bring in a great crowd. I wouldn't want to bring a lot of people into Hurston because of the crime and the, you know, the sludge and the thick air. And it's just not a great place to go and visit. But Crusader, R Corp, and of course New Babbage over in Microtech can house these amazingly large venues and then all you have to do is just put three of the ship makers in each one of them and just leave it open for the entirety three four five whatever it is and then you're separating the crowds between multiple cities multiple planets and you're separating the number of ships across more venues and just leave it open every day of course this isn't something that i want them to give up development time to but it's something to think about in the future where you might be asking somebody to go day after day also appearing at today's show are four venerable spacecraft from misc to the far left you're going to see the reliant tana in the forefront you're going to see the razor stealth fighter in the background you'll see the starfire Gem gemini and we're just now passing the freelancer mis these are all great ships. They've been in the game for quite a bit. In fact, if you are a subscriber, you're getting a chance to fly this one that we just looked at for a few moments there. But this is one of my favorite MISC ships. It's the Freelancer MIS. It's a great ship just to stand off and let your buddies go and 
get into a furball with some enemies while you just launch your missiles. And finally, we come to the belt of the bowl, the Mercury Star Runner. Now in this last hall, you're going to have the Tumbral Cyclones and you're going to have the Mercury Star Runners. The Star Runners aren't your average, everyday, run-of-the-mill military spacecraft. They have a little bit more nefarious and stealthy mission. They're data runners, surveillance aircraft. These are the ones that hide in the background and look and sniff for all the information that they can gather on the enemy and then run it as fast as they can over to friendly lines just to pass it on to another ship to get it home to headquarters. The Star Runner is a really fast ship and today as we go through it, as we look at it, I want you to think of it as the one ship that you need to get during this wonderful event that we're having. Now in the beginning, the ship of choice for me was none other than the RSI Constellation. To me, that was the epic ship. It was the pinnacle of ships. It was the golden unicorn. It was the amazing ship that I saved all my money up for and purchased and there was never going to be another ship like it but after three updates and what i would i would call a good attempt at creating the ship it's still fallen a little short of my expectations it is gorgeous on the outside but it still performs a little bit like a dog although over the last couple of updates it's still a force to be reckoned with but for me i wanted that ship that made me feel like i w not like i was invincible but like i was truly in a universe where i can do the things that i like to do which is to stay in the background sniff around see what's going on and if i get in trouble run like a bat out of hell and this ship the crusader mercury star runner is that ship for me. It's got a cargo hold big enough to carry a large size rover, kind of like the Ursa, I hope the Lynx too. You could throw a cyclone in it. And they did that just in the end. They started looking at the ship and deciding what they can do to make it just a little bit better. And by widening and lengthening out the cargo hold, they actually gave us a ship that actually makes a little bit of inroads into also being a potential exploration vessel. Though if you want to explore, I still recommend a 600i, a Carrick, or even the Aquila. I think those will be much better for that. But in the end, I think this is the ship that if you do attend in the next few hours, you should rent. So having rented the Crusader Mercury Star Runner in the black color, oh god, I think it's beautiful, I decided to go over to New Babbage and take it out for a spin. Now the first thing I'm going to do is just walk through it real quickly because I think that the workmanship, the design, and the implementation of certain systems that are in the game right now on this ship are unparalleled. I guess the only ships that can actually come close right now are Crusader Industries' own Starlifters. I think those have a similar build quality and workmanship, and I'm hoping that the newer ships that come out all follow this. Alright, we have a little bit of underexposure here, but let's just say that these dark spaces over here have much more in them than what I'm showing right now, these being the engine rooms. Oh, well, we're not really going to take a tour right now. If that's what you want, you can see my very own Crusader Mercury Star Runner tour here on my channel, or you can go through the countless numbers that are appearing on YouTube right now. But what we're going to do is we're going to take this baby out for a ride, and we're going to do two different types of missions. Now, one of these missions is going to be called Illegal Monitors Detected. This mission pays out 20,000 AUEC and it takes literally five minutes max. Five if you're not trying, okay? If you are trying, it's going to be about three to five, okay? So yes, it still sounds like it's going to take five, but it's going to be less no matter what. All you do 
is ping out until you find the three satellites, destroy them, rinse and repeat with the next one in line. We've taken quite a number of them here. Initially, I thought I was going to make over 100,000 AUEC for these missions. But server issues and lag issues caused me not to be able to complete one of the missions closest to Microtech. So at the end of the day, I made just over 85k from doing all the missions, which is not too shabby being I spent just under an hour doing each one of these missions. Not for each, but just under an hour for doing all of the missions total. The first mission takes us to the furthest moon from Microtech, which is Euterpe. I think that's how you say it. If not, please correct me below. So now we jump into the mission area and immediately turn towards the comma ray. As we're going towards the comma ray, we're going to bring up the scanner and we're going to ping. Now, if the server isn't too bogged down, the minute you ping, you're going to get a return. Turn towards whatever you see, which is usually a box like what we see on the screen right now, and just fly towards it. Make sure you take another ping, and usually when you get about 7k away inside of the Mercury Star Runner, you're going to be able to get a lock on the target. Almost every time when I do this, you're going to be getting one of those satellites. There is an opportunity for you to find something else, like pirates attacking. Sometimes in a freelancer, sometimes in a buccaneer, sometimes in both. You don't have to engage them, especially with the shields and the speed of this ship. Yes, I know the buccaneer is wicked fast, but what you're here for is to destroy the three satellites as fast as you can and then to get on the next mission. You also get a nice little fireworks display as you blow each one of them up. Each time you fire and destroy one, immediately turn back towards the comma ray and then just keep pinging as you're around the center point. You should be you should be able to finish this rather quickly. Shouldn't be more than a couple of minutes and already we have our next target. We're going to fly towards it as quick as we can. At 13 kilometers we should be able to close the distance pretty fast. You can see how fast we're moving past that comma ray in the upper right. And we are now down in our, yep, there we go. We have two targets that we can actually lock onto and we're going to fire. And there we go. This one should go pretty quickly. The lasers that are on the star runner are not too shabby, but if I were you, I would upgrade them either to attrition's or I would upgrade them to something that you like to use at a further distance. I think the laser cannons also are very good. But this is one of those things that don't take my advice because things are going to change and if you're watching this months and months from now telling you to use one weapon over another may be an issue. So I'm not going to give you an exact what to use because I do feel like if I did that you would lock on to my recommendation and then potentially be using the wrong weaponry in the future. So I do have to say this is one of the longest one of these missions I've had and I do believe it's because of the server lag. But even so, I was able to get five missions done in less than an hour and make over 80k. Yeah, how do you say that? Well, one of them I had to kill because I flew around for a little bit and couldn't find anything because nothing was returning as it is here. But you're going to see a mistake I made. And I'm going to fly back towards that in just a little bit. There was another target that had lit up before. And I turned away from it. So what I'm doing now is I'm just doing a little bit of searching. I'm going to fly back out this way. And I'm going to shoot and find it in not too long of a time. So a lot of this issue that I was having today was for bad server performance. It may be something that you experience, but not something that you experience often. With the huge influx of new players into the game, especially since there's graduation in the US and the Invictus week is on, things like this happen from time to time. Now you can see where we were flying around this comma ray for quite a bit and then finally this came up. 
on normal days that you play this game, when it is not Invictus Week, when there aren't a million people that suddenly find their way into the game because there's a sudden free fly week, you'll be able to get these missions done in a blink of an eye. Believe me. But I like these missions. They're quick, they're painless, and they're a lot more rewarding than just running cargo back and forth. Unless, of course, you have a huge ship like the Star Lifter where you can make a lot of money with one run. So we're gonna skip ahead a little bit, blow this thing up, and then we're gonna turn tail and run all the way over to one of the Lagrange points and take on a claim jumper mission. So claim jumper missions are a little bit different. They don't go as quickly. They make only a little bit more than the illegal monitoring missions, but they can be a little bit more fun. I do them for two reasons. I know that they are a little bit more, I want to use the right word, they're a little bit more dangerous. There's more of a risk when you take a claim jumper mission. You have a huge chance for dying in most ships. You just have to be a really good pilot. Why I like them is that I like to test the different loadouts of the ships that I own when I'm changing weapons, shields, coolers or power plants, whatever it might be. I think the claim jumper missions are just as easy and can be a little bit more tedious because there's nine satellites and multiple waves of prospectors that are going to attack you. But really this mission itself is going to teach you how to use six degrees of freedom. You never want to be flying directly at something if you look at my velocity vector, you can see it moving from just a little bit above the center line of the ship to just a little bit to the left of the center line of the ship and then back to the middle again. And that's because I'm trying to throw off the aim of these sentry satellites. The sentry satellites have really big weapons and when they hit, it is possible that in most ships, they're not gonna just take down your shields, but do some damage too. In the Star Runner and some other ships, if you get good enough shields, you'll probably lose your shield, but you probably won't get any damage. In fact, a couple of times I get hit here and you don't see me lose my, uh, my hull at all. But I think this is a good one because it teaches you how to be a little bit more aware of your surroundings. I would definitely guide you to try to find the outside of the ring of satellites and work your way in. That way you don't get yourself into a position where you have multiple satellites firing at you at the same time. Trying to get to the outside and move in means that you're going to be able to pick them off one by one and not have to worry about too much damage on your ship. You do want to maximize the profit you make from these missions and minimize the damage that your ship takes. And maximizing the profit could be actually pretty cool too. You're going to be chased down eventually by prospectors. If you take the call to arms mission, you're going to make extra UEC each time you shoot down or destroy one of the prospectors. You can make 500 to 1000 UEC each, turning a simple 22,500 alpha UEC mission into something that's over 30,000 alpha UEC. Now, I'm not telling you that this is the best way to make money in the game. It is not. But this is a great way to test your piloting skills. This is a great way to test the loadout of your ship. And it's relatively safe if you do the legal ones. A little bit more dangerous and a little bit less lucrative sometimes to do the illegal ones. Only because you're going to wind up having to at some point remove your crime stat, which means sitting around some place like Korea for 20 minutes, 40 minutes to try to reduce your crime stat. But I'm not trying to tell you not to be nefarious. I'm not trying to tell you not to be a criminal. I mean, if you weren't, then my bounty hunting days would be numbered. But what I am telling you is, is if you're just starting out, this is a great mission. So I am a little bit higher on Invictus this week. I think that putting Crusader in the middle of the week, just before Memorial Day weekend, is great. I just wish they gave something like a seven-day rental to the people that were flying free 
That way they could test out these ships that cost 100, 150, 200, 250, whatever it is. So if there are some big spenders there, they could decide which one they want. I am telling people that this is a great ship to buy ahead of time, but for the cheaper ships, for the fighters, for the the cars, for the tanks, things like that, I'm still going to say run missions like this, make money in the game, save money in real life, and have fun playing the game to earn the cool stuff in the game. I think that's all for today's video, and I'm going to start figuring out what I'm going to do for Friday. Hopefully something big comes up between now and then. If you do like this video, please click the thumbs up button below. If you do have comments, please seed the comment section with your comments, questions, or just what you'd like to see in future videos. And if you do subscribe, please be sure to click on that bell shape icon to be notified of all my future videos. And with that said, folks, y'all be safe out there, and I will talk to you soon.